Hi, I'm Justin Rohner here at the Queen Creek Botanical Gardens, and we're here in another segment of our series, the Golden Rule Garden Series. And I'm here with Piyush, and we're going to talk more specifically about Jainism and how the faith of Jainism integrates and what, what it does around the Golden Rule, and also about some of the garden elements and some of the plants and things that might be of great significance to your faith. So welcome, Piyush. Thank you, Justin. Thank you to Queen Creek Botanical Gardens. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Jain Center of Greater Phoenix. I'm a Sunday School Coordinator there. I'm the Arizona Interfaith uh, Council member of Jain Faith. And I'm also a trustee of Srimad Rajchandra Mission Dharampur, USA. So glad to be here. Thank well, you. thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the people that you are representing as yes. you bring them with you in this conversation. Thank you. And at this time in the world, it seems like the golden rule is, no, is more relevant than ever. Yes, it is. And I think I'm so glad that you're doing such a golden rule series to bring out the awareness of golden rule among different faiths. And that's really a wonderful um, attempt you are making uh, for bringing this to light. Indeed. And so with that, how does it show up in Jainism? What is the golden rule? How is it spoken? So the golden rule for Jainism is very simple, that every living being has a soul and what should not go about wandering, hurting or killing any living being, not just human being, but any living being. And that is the golden rule of Jainism. And so any living being. And so what does that include? Is a rock a living being? Y yes. Yes. So it has yes. a, there's, it there's a, some life there too. Okay. So we believe that every, every, uh, uh, every like rock, has a uh, living being inside uh, and they are called, the, they have a rock as a body. Similarly plant, we mm. believe plant has a life and plant has a uh, life with plant body as a body, just like we have a body like this, similarly water and so on. So, but those are very slowest form of life. They are one sense being, they have only the uh, sense of touch. But we are advanced uh, life forms where we have five senses and uh, so we have a range from one sense being to five sense beings and we should respect every being, every living being as much as you can. We have a kind of a philosophy mm -hmm. that living is killing because by just by coming here, it took me 30 minutes to come here, I probably killed many living beings. Yeah. Okay. But best living is least killing. And that is the philosophy that we live by. So minimize the violence in our own lives. And that is our contribution to the world. So minimizing the violence. And so minimizing the violence in not just our interactions between humans, but all, yes. all of our interactions with all living beings. So if I hurt someone, I'm committing a violence. Even if I, do, I didn't hurt you physically, but I hurt you mentally, mm -hmm. I've committed violence. Similarly, every plant life we have, if we just pull it out, if I pull a branch just for fun, I'm committing violence against the tree. The gifts we have as humans is that we are consciously aware we can interact, we can yes. communicate, yes. we can discuss. Correct. You know, and, and that is a beautiful thing about what the golden rule is a, a, a lot about. It's not just an act, but it's also in, it's a thought. It it's, 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 all starts with thought. Yes. All starts with the thinking and, the, and how we perceive others or how yes. we perceive other beings and how we, yes. how we interact with that, that we're all interconnected of sorts. That's basically what we're yes. saying. There's the yes. interconnection. Yes. Everything we do, we are all interdependent. So that's why we have to be mindful. We have to be aware of every action we take and every thought we take. Here at the Botanical Gardens in Queen Creek, we also obviously have edibles everywhere. So food is definitely a big part yes. of what we do here. So in terms of trees and Jainism, are there any significant trees within your faith that really tie all of this message together? Yes. So uh, there is, a, 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 in our scriptures, uh, uh, our our Tirthankaras, our God, mm -hmm. have talked about before agriculture started, when we started growing our uh, wheat and rice and everything, there was this one tree called Kalpavruksh tree. And Kalpavruksh tree literally means wish fulfilling tree. Mm. So, what, what that, and during that time period, people would go to the tree and say, I want wheat. So, the tree will grant the wish and, and you get the wheat. So I want rice, so you get rice. I want the vegetables. So the Kalpavruksh tree, the concept was, it was there, but as the as we got worse and worse and worse, the Kalpavruksh tree stopped giving the uh, 
the fruits of mm. wish you grant stop granting the wish so kalparvuk tree has a very significant uh, kind of in our scriptures they is that a real about, tree i mean can we can we pile one somewhere uh, we'll have to wait another billions of years <laughs> before it will come back again what Got we it. believe is the cycle repeats but so the next time it will happen is probably billions and billions of years later again will be in that era where the kalpavruksh tree will be the only thing you need and it will grant all your wish then the other tree which is very significant is called ashoka tree and ashoka tree is is a tree that if you see our tirthankar uh, there is always going to be one tree ashoka tree literally means sorrowless so what it means is that god sermons if we follow it then it will remove the sorrow from our lives mm. and so that is a very significant tree uh, ashoka tree uh, sorrowless and it i think belongs to the lagoon family so maybe you can do research on that yeah lagoon and, family that's a great tree because we know it it fixes nitrogen in the soil it helps all of the plants around it grow better right. it and when it, it it flowers so just like you were talking about and then when it fruits the bean pods really they're only ripe when they do fall yes yeah and so that is a very easy to connect with non-violent Be interactive up. tree it's it's a right. good example of communicating with others it's like sometimes it just takes more patience rather than violence yes in order to then align correct so nature is there for us and i think if we align ourselves to the nature we will minimize the violence in our lives and we will feel better we will feel good about our lives we will feel good about everyone else also we as an individual can make a difference in world peace because the world peace starts with individual peace and mm. we have to develop that i would like to talk about is lotus so the lotus is a very significant plant and flower or uh, if you want to call it the lotus what it does is it it lives amidst the swamp but it's not affected by it and lotus is blooms really beautiful and yeah, beautiful and, and big bloom big, big yeah. bloom and so what it's saying is our lives could be sometimes difficult so we could be living in the swampy kind of land get started in a swamp swamp but, but we can still bloom but we can still bloom like lotus and so that's should be our goal that we should not be affected lotus is not affected by its surroundings it still blooms it is staying it's in within its own innate nature similarly our soul we are in the middle of so many negative things mm -hmm. but we can still be positive we can still be unaffected unattached by the things going around us and so that's a beautiful message a lotus gives to us there are, there are a lot of trees that give you uh, medicinal uh, uh, benefits so neem tree uh, i think you may have heard neem uh -huh. tree provides a lot of medicinal benefits uh, and uh, there are uh, the uh, so so neem is definitely one very popular and has medicinal value so just like i said some trees we plant mm -hmm. but some trees jains do not plant and the ones that we do not plant are the root vegetables okay. because what we believe is that the root vegetables have lot of life when you pull a root the like potato or onion or garlic or even carrot and so on and so forth there is lot of life in it so just by eating one potato we believe billions of lives have been killed all organisms the bacteria and everything all, that we're living that from that there. so we avoid any root uh, vegetable plantation and uh, you won't find it in the jain temples or jain households and we won't promote it. so thematically if we were creating a jain garden here it sounds like we would have a number of leguminous trees trees that also produce fruit that when they ripen they fall yes. and uh, and so that's more like heirloom type varieties because yes. a lot of the hybrids it's like you have to get in you have to pick them to get them at the ripest spot right. and all that stuff Again, as this this Golden Rule Garden series continues, we'll continue to explore more faiths and how the Golden Rule really shows up for them and for you. And knowing that each of these faiths are really here for you, yes. they're here to to extend that offering to you, it, it, not with anything and more requirement in return. No, it's simply nothing. to treat and and extend that love, that that extension of nonviolence to any living being here. Yes. To to you yes. to find that place of peace that you can be heard and communicate and share and i think that's some of the message of the golden rule yes it's creating that space where where the anger the violence that might be in us from yes. the pains that we've had and the, the the trials that we've had can have a voice yes and a voice of not just tolerance but love understanding and respect and respect